Another question about measuring acceleration in a PAG. This is one of the PAGs in OCR Gateway. This is an OCR Gateway question on a PAG, which is of other specs called required practicals. But this one is in all different specifications. This is an acceleration practical, so it's definitely useful for all specifications. It's going to ask you how to conduct the practical. It's going to ask you to plot a graph and accurate pl graph Plotting skills are really important in these new GCSEs. You need to be accurate to half a small square. And then it's those tricky suggest improvements to practicals questions. Okay, so a student puts a trolley on a horizontal surface. The trolley is at rest and has a string attached which runs over a pulley. There's a pulley there. Force supplied by the weight makes the trolley move in the direction of the arrow. Look at the diagram. Explain how the, explain how the student could determine the acceleration of the trolley. So basically what would they need to measure and how would they therefore get the acceleration from that? Okay, well, there's two ways to do this, in fact, okay? Um, I'll tell you the way that the mark scheme have gone for, and I'll tell you the way that I would do this in practice, because it would be very hard to do it their way without using light gates or something like that, and that will come back later on. So they say, well, determine the speed at two points. Okay, you don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna put them on there as one and two. So determine a speed here and a speed here as well. Okay, and measure the time in between them and use the formula change in speed over time. Now in practice, that is not the way that I would do that, okay? There is incidentally two marks and any of those three points, any two of those three points will get you two of those marks. That's not the way that I would do that in practice because it'd be very hard to measure an instantaneous speed at two points. You can always use, however, the initial speed, u, as being zero. And I would just measure distance, S here, okay? And I would measure a time to do that distance. Then I would calculate an average speed using distance divided by time. I'd double it to give me a final speed, so I presume it accelerated uh, just, just the same way throughout the whole thing. And then I would divide the final speed, which would be this V here, by time to give me the acceleration. So that one. There's one, there's a video here with dragsters about acceleration if you want to check that out. All right, so a student uses a five newton weight or force to pull the trolley. He repeats experiments a few times, different trolleys of different masses and calculates the average acceleration of each trolley. Look at his results. Um, there's the force on the string. We don't need to plot those though. There's the mass of the trolley. There's the average acceleration. So plot the five points for the mass of the trolley, one mark. Now remember when you're using graphs in exams, you need to be accurate to half a small square. That's pretty accurate, so do this with a bit of care. You need to be plotting with an accuracy of half a small square, so that's a pretty tight accuracy. and you need to use a pencil because we all make mistakes. That does get me a mark by the way, that's, that's that plotting mark. So the next thing to do is to use the graph to estimate the acceleration of a four kilogram trolley. And you should probably see there's something missing from that graph straight away. Well, all these points up here, we need to estimate this point, the four kilogram trolley here. A lot of people have tried to fit a straight line of best fit to that, but there is no possible straight line of best fit. If I run it through like this, then this one's above it, this one's above it, and these are all below it. And whenever you have points above it at either end and points below it in the middle, or the opposite way around, points above a line at either end and, um, sorry, points above the line in the middle and below it at either end, you know it can't be a straight line that you can fit. So it has to be a curve. And when I try and fit a curve, I would normally turn the page around and just sort of do a couple of practice swings and then have a go. Okay, now it's important not to make it a sketchy curve. We want a single line of best fit. Curves up like this and I'm going to just delete the points here. Although in this case, I don't get a mark for the, the curve, I get a mark for the data that I take from the curve. But the accuracy of your curve drawing needs to be to within half a small square, so it's well worth getting good at it. Okay, my line is too hairy to be a good line of best fit, really. All right, so there we go. 
Um, estimate the acceleration of four kilogram trolley, I would say one. Is that good enough? Yeah, one point naught I'm gonna go for. Now, they have allowed you a range. They have said anything from 0 0.9 to 1.3. There's quite a large range in this case because there's quite a lot of extrapolation to do, but you need to be really accurate in these new GCSEs with your um, graph skills. Suggest two ways of improving his results so the acceleration is higher. Student wants to improve results. The acceleration seems to be much lower than he expects. Now, I hope you're getting the idea straight away. Acceleration is lower because possibly not all of that force, that weight that he's given, is used to accelerate the trolley. Because actually there's another force that tries to slow down the trolley as soon as it starts moving, and that is friction. So the resultant force on the trolley is less than the actual weight of this weight. So you need to do something to actually get rid of the friction. So you need to compensate the ramp for friction by raising one end slightly. Now, um, then they go on to say, well, what you could do is you could retake anomalous results, or you could take multiple readings and then take an average. Now, actually, I don't think that that is really a fair way to improve this experiment so the acceleration is higher. But that's what they've given in the mark scheme, so th those points, we're gonna say they're acceptable. But really, I think my class, when they did this, they had some better ideas, like maybe using a little bit more mass or a little bit less mass on the trolley, or a, a, a different way of compensating the ramp for friction, maybe using a linear air track or something like that. But um, mark scheme, this one is a specimen paper, so I'm, I'm thinking that in review, they might actually get rid of some of these things and be more likely to accept things like using a lower mass of a trolley. And I really think that because, well, these would have, these only get rid of random errors, and random error doesn't make it higher than, than it was before. A random error doesn't make something much lower than you expect. Since the friction is definitely the case, the friction is going to make the acceleration lower than what it should be, but the taking out anomalous results or taking multiple readings will only reduce random errors. So I'm not even going to write them down because I don't agree with the mark scheme that they've produced for this specimen paper. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Kit Best Masters and this is Gorilla Physics where we care a lot about your understanding physics more so you enjoy it more, get more confident and do better in your exams. Thanks for watching.